Hello, 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 everybody. Hello, everyone. We're coming to you live today. And oh, it's so fun. We're on both of our cameras, so we'll be facing both of the ways to play. And uh, yeah, let's start. I'm sure you guys are getting a little ping, 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 ping. Notice that we're going live and we're going to keep it short, concise, brief, but also juicy and really valuable and impactful for those that want to join us in this conversation. And uh, if you want to let us know where you're tuning in from in the chat, we'd love to know. Hey, Joni and hey, Manny. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And so today we wanted to just jump on. Do you want to kick us off, my love? Or do you want me to kick us off? Uh, well, we're asked quite often, well, people get mistaken quite often having high expectations in a relationship versus standards in a relationship. And it sounds similar, but there's definitely a nuance. Yeah, we'll start there. I love that, baby. Okay, so let's talk about this. So oftentimes when we are, let's say, in the dating game specifically, but also dating to enter into a relationship let's say there's a desire to enter into a relationship that's the fun of dating some people date just to date we dated because we were interested in dating and then also being in a relationship we're open to that we wanted that it was a desire but we weren't forcing it so this is for some of you that are listening that are in the dating world or i think this also can really apply to your relationship if you want to up level your relationship also to the next level of depth and intimacy and sexiness and fun this also really applies so we often get when we're in a space together that we have really um, high standards. So people can tell that both Naeem and myself are individuals that have high standards. And that's absolutely true. We do have high standards. And in fact, it's by me having my own high standards and Naeem having his own high standards that actually magnetized and brought us together because we live our life a certain way. We have a way of being and a way of living that is driven towards and ambitious towards excellence and serving and growth. And so we're not gonna attract people who aren't really living that very high standard, high quality lifestyle. And we don't just mean like financially. Of course, that's one way, but we're talking about the way you actually have high standards for yourself, the way you hold yourself, you're responsible for yourself, your communication, your emotions, your your mindset. Anything else you want to add to what high standards means for you? High energy. High energy. That's a standard in our relationship. Anything else that's well, high standard? Be, it could be your health and fitness. It could be the way you eat. So. Working out. Yeah, health. Exactly. So we hold ourselves to a high standard, and that's why we really relate well. And there is a difference between having a high standard and where there's a societal belief that people could say, oh, you have a high standard, that means you might end up alone because you're too picky or you ask for too much for somebody, you know? So there could be this idea that you may need to lower your standards or as we were talking to some women, like to shrink or to be a chameleon and adapt to your partner and in a way, let go of your own standards. But I don't believe that's actually the way and I think it's safe to say you also don't believe that's the way. We actually believe that, and this is not what most people think, but 1% of us would think that, you know, for those of you that want to have high standards and be met in someone with high standards, you will actually be met in that space. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so there's a difference between, and we'll go more and more into some of these nuances and conversations when we have our master class that's happening on Monday. So you can always send us a DM or a comment on here, masterclass, and we'll send you some of the information and have a little chat. So we'll go into it much more deeply, but for the sake of this heartfelt conversation and what we wanted to bring to you all today, you know, there's a difference between having high standards and having high expectations. Go into that, my love. Yeah, well, I think, well, one is, I would never compromise on my own standards for how I want to show up in life. And I would assume whoever's watching this would feel the same way, which is why you would tune into a uh, content like this, right? You want to grow, you want to be your best. You don't want to compromise being your best self and not feeling guilty about that too. So that's another challenge a lot of people have, but that's not, we're not going to go off on that tangent. But then also in your relationship, people get confused with, having high expectations of like what they demand and expect from the other person 
versus thinking that's a standard. It's not a standard for me to expect Josefina to like make me dinner every night. That's not a standard. That's an expectation that's not, that's gonna lead to pain because one, that's not what she wants to do, right? And, and I'm just making up a hypothetical example, right? Or, or it's not a good, it's not a standard for a woman to expect a guy to do what? What's an, what's an example that women usually have? Well, this is an expectation, but what's interesting is this is an, there's, there's also a little, again, you'll join us for the master class, you'll get more in, more in the nuances, but there's a nuance where that's also an unspoken expectation. So there could be spoken expectations and then also unspoken expectations, which could come off as like demand and also disappointment. So I like what you're saying, which is like, he can have an expectation of like, I expect you to cook dinner for me like every single night and he can express that to me and, and she, I'd be like, great. Well, that's not what I want to be doing. She, <laughs> she could have the same expectations for me too. Yeah. Like, I make dinner for her also. He does. And so. he makes breakfast and he makes, if you watch my stories, drinks and smoothies and tonics that actually I don't even expect. That's what's really funny. But we will go on that for a moment. But literally not having the expectation is what brought me what it is that I want. And so vice what, versa. So what's a common expectation women have of men that leads to pain for them? So a common expectation that I see women having in clients is like that they want men to always lead. That they want men to always pay. That they want men to always plan something or I'll use a really simple one like, like a birthday. Like women expect that men should know what we want for our birthdays, like to the T, the gift we want, where we want to go. And even without setting him up for success, which actually is really painful for the woman, but also really painful for the man and her partner because he's he, there's no way he's going to knock that out the park because he has no idea what her expectations are in the first place. And mm -hmm. she also hasn't even explicitly shared what her desires are. So I would say... For women, it's like men's expectations of way of uh, men's being and what men give to a relationship um, or they would want or expect for them to contribute. Also, when it comes to dating, women are ex like expect men to know where they're going. Where are we going if we're dating, right? I'm expecting you to know where we're going so you can lead me if this is going to turn into a long-term relationship or not. So I don't need to waste my time. So I'm expecting as a woman for him to know where we're going but that's also not fair to the guy and actually not a helpful thing to have such a high expectation because then we're attaching so much to let's say the man or the the, the person that we're on a date with who maybe doesn't even know exactly what they want and majority of time newsflash ladies men do not know what it is that they want or where the relationship is going until they actually instinctually and intrinsically know and that will only come through their lived experience with a bit more time, not by asking a million questions, not by putting their feet to the fire, ultimatum or pressuring them. It's a quick way to drop polarity and actually shut someone down and not even give him a chance to find his power and his truth within. And that's where the most powerful point of starting a relationship is, is without that expectation. Yep. So how could they flip it? What's a what's a solution? So instead of expecting that, they can you can clearly communicate that as a desire, and then also still not be attached to it. And I would also say flip it where who do you, who do you have to be to actually create that behavior in your partner? Yes. So again, it's not there's nothing wrong with like wanting that stuff, but again, kind of like the Dalai Lama says, it's not bad to want things, but if you're attached to the desire and the want, then you're going to be lead to suffering. So it's cool for me to like have that desire for just you know, to massage me every night or to do whatever so often, <laughs> but not be attached to it. And then also, so don't be attached to it. And then who do I have to become to create that behavior in her? So like, again, it's more yes, about baby. who yes, I have yes. to bring to the relationship, bring to her, that's actually gonna make her want to do that, which is similar to the, the juicing situation that she <laughs> loves, right? She never asked me for juice, but I love making you your juice. Yeah. I know, and smoothies too. <laughs> and same thing for women, right? It's like we get to flip that script and, and one, uh, like, I don't say an objection, but one complaint, for lack of a better word, that I hear women saying is, you know, well, we're together already or we're married together or I want him to do this. Why do I have to be the one to still, um, you know, 
seduce and play and and provoke and entice and bring more of my high energy and like my feminine gifts to it you know because he should just be giving to me and as we've said before a relationship is a place where we give that's never going to go anywhere right so the more that we're actually willing to give our greatest gift as women which is our love which is our sensuality which is our radiance which is our beauty um, our nurturance and so many other things and also our sexual gifts the more that that's gonna just fuel and and flourish a thriving romantic relationship and the more that's going to naturally inspire a man to want to give to you in the most amazing and unexpected ways that especially as women may not even know that we want to be given in these ways like i had no idea that i wanted a man that would make me fresh juices and you know every single not every single day for the most part most of the mornings and it's been one of the greatest delights and surprises that you know i could have experienced but it wasn't because of the demand aspect and so that's something that we think is really helpful and something that we wanted to share with you all because whether you're dating or whether you're in a long-term marriage or a long-term relationship you're engaged or whatever journey you're on just notice if there's attachments, as Naeem was saying, to getting the goal or the outcome or attachment to the thing having to happen a certain way or even at all. Because like he said, it is the attachment to the desire. that The desire itself is great. The desire itself is not bad. It's not sinful or shameful. The desire means that life is moving through you. And you're meant to experience that. And it's a beautiful opportunity to actually open into receiving more. But where we get caught is the attachment to the desire, which creates the suffering. And then that attachment creates conflict and shuts one another down. And then we don't want to give our gifts to each other. And then we can find ourselves in a stuck moot point. So having desire and having expectations are very different, different things. Yeah, it's like surfing on a wave. You gotta, you want to intentionally go for the wave in the ocean, but you also don't want to be attached to the wave. Um, and looks like we have a, somebody who wants to jump on. Let's let's add this guest on. Oh, who is see, this? See what who they is have this? To say. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. We're on. If you're watching me, we're on Naeem's now. Who is this? Oh, they declined. Okay. Oh. We, we lost them. It's okay. That's so, okay. <laughs> but then standards is cool too, because that's what you discuss as partners, where it's like, hey, what is our standard for our relationship? So we have a standard to maintain high energy in our relationship, because low energy causes conflict, stuckness, and it's not fun when you're with somebody. Drama, like, problems, like, stories, hallucinations. Think of like, when you're with a friend who has low energy. It's like, it's cool. We all have our down days, right? But like, if you're with a friend that's always down, it's like, you don't want them to be your friend anymore. So if you bring that low energy to your relationship over and over, and one person's high energy, the other one's low, then there's even more conflict because it's like, this person's like, oh, life is beautiful. And the other one's like, <laughs> what's wrong? I don't want to do this. So. So that's the standard we have. And again, this is where you discuss with your partner what are the standards we have for a relationship. And that's where you say, hey, these are my desires. Like one standard I have with Josephine is I want to work out every day. We like to work out together, but I want both of us to work out every day, no matter what, pretty much. So I have a standard for her to ideally work out every day too, which I tell her, and she does amazing at doing that now. Yeah, and the standard also is for movement. So we have a standard also of making sure we're moving our body, whether it's fitness or not. Um, and then the standard that I have and that we have together is we have a standard for our intimacy and continuously cultivating our polarity and our intimacy and the sexiness because that's such a priority. So we have a high standard in our relationship when it comes to intimacy and love. So make sure we're always in adventure, make sure we're always clearing any triggers or emotional blocks that maybe would close us, you know, to create any resentment. So that way the fire and the, the passion is always moving between us and slow is smooth and smooth is fast. I see from somebody on there. Jarek. <laughs> from Jarek, yeah. <laughs> Jarek is, we have to work out harder, yes. Oh my God, did you say that? You have to work out harder, just you know. I do, well, I do work out a <laughs> good talking, amount. He's, talk, he's talking about me. Oh my gosh. So, like, but those are again our standards we're, that come into we, also we agreements. Also have standards for the friends that we want to hang out with and yep. the people we spend time with too, right? So, 
And also the things that we read, we have high standards for the things that we read. As silly enough as it is, I, I now send Naeem before I purchase a book, like, hey, baby, what do you think of this book? And he's like, where did it come from? And if it's not a high standard resource of where it's come from, we're not going to even entertain bringing it into our field, bringing it into our consciousness, right? Like, so it's simple things like that, but also it makes such a difference when you're developing high standards for yourself and also creating a really high standard elevated relationship to keep your energy high, so to keep the intake really at a high level. And we, again, I think we both believe that high standards just attracts people who have high standards. And it's a really fun way to play with life when you're surrounded with people who are all on their A game, who are all playing, who are all in it and learning and growing together and sharing wins and sharing some failures, but no one's on the sideline. No one's just, you know, low vibe, low energy, not focused on growing or contribution and loving and, and finding new ways, you know, to, to innovate and live a really great quality, you know, of life. So we're going to answer more about this in our masterclass on Monday. That's right. We will yeah. answer more about it in our masterclass on Monday. Koa says good job. Thanks, Koa. We love you. Happy birthday, Koa. <laughs> and anything else you want to say on that, my love, before we close? Nope. I think one good thing is, like we said, I think on our first live is continuously to have high engagement, but low to no attachment. Be engaged. Engage with your desires, engage with your partner, engage with your communication. I would love for you to give me a foot massage every night. That's awesome. I would love that too. Let's see where we can meet each other in, right? And not expect it to happen every single night. I would love for us to go on date night, you know, once a week, every single week. That's awesome, right? That desire is met for the most part. Naeem does an amazing job with doing date night every single week and very rarely do we miss or we agree to have a different night and that's a standard again that we we have so the invitation is to really raise your standards when it comes to love to really raise your standards when it comes to investing in personal development and growth not just for your business not just for the money not just for your health or like biohacking but really when it comes to love and relationships and intimacy and sexuality there is so much juice and power to be reclaimed in that area when you step into that space. So that's what we wanted to share with you all. Thanks for joining us today for this beautiful, fun, and heartfelt conversation and sending you guys lots and lots of love. All right. Let's do it. Foot massage time, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>